Hi, I'm Jeff Greif, the publisher of Chilled Magazine and ChilledMagazine.com, and I'm really excited to be in Las Vegas at WSWA 75, and I'm really excited to be with Castle Brands today, um, as they're going to mix us up a drink that was at the opening reception last night. I'm with Kristen Kilpack, who's the Nevada State Rep, and with Max Solano, who is a master mixologist for Southern Glazers here in Nevada. And um, Castle Brands is, is such a great and interesting company. Kristen's going to tell us a little bit more about it. But um, well, why, don't you, why don't we talk a little bit about the brands that you have, and, um, and then we'll come back to this recipe. Well, I'm going to brag for a minute because I have one of the greatest jobs you do? in this industry. I do. I work for Castle Brands. Uh, Castle Brands is an importer of some of the greatest small spirits or, or crafted spirits out there. Um, some of those include Polini which is uh, Italian. We have a, a lemon cello, a peach cello, a raspicello, Nepo, which is an Irish whiskey, and Gosling's ginger beer. And love to tell you a little bit about them, if I may. Sure, but oh, don't forget the Gosling's rum, oh, right? Did I? Oh, we do have a Gosling's rum. Right. It's not going to be in our cocktail today, okay. but let me talk about Gosling's for a minute. Okay, that's okay. go ahead. So Gosling's uh, is an eighth generation family. It's, in, uh, it's from Bermuda. And they do make a rum. A lot of folks know us for our dark and stormy, which is our so our good. it's our signature cocktail, trademark cocktail, which is a, a dark rum and ginger beer. But we wanted to do a little bit something a little bit different and create a cocktail with our ginger beer using our Irish whiskey from Napogue. Okay. So Napogue is actually from Ireland. The Napogue Castle is actually outside of uh, Shannon, and the Andrews family, which is from Texas they were collecting whiskey privately just for their own consumption and had so many barrels they weren't sure what to do with it so they decided to create their own brand and name it after this beautiful castle that they were uh, remodeling and it's a real castle today you can actually go in and stay in it uh, and so that's our Nippo castle we use uh, we have 12 year old uh, whiskey we have 14 year old whiskey and we have 16 year old whiskey today we're going to use the 12 year old whiskey then we've got our Polini here, which is uh, the Polini family. It's the eighth generation. Uh, everything from Polini is organic. All the fruit is organic. Everything's uh, hand-picked. And it's actually the only distillery in Rome. And uh, it's beautiful. The cocktails that we're going to have today, it's going to be perfect. And Well, before you go into the cocktail sure. and before we get Max shaking, um, why don't you talk about the other brands like Jefferson's and that complete the Castle Brands portfolio? Oh, we have great portfolio. We do. We have Jefferson's, which is a, a bourbon from Kentucky, which is the Zala family. And uh, we make, we do a lot of experimentation with our bourbons. Uh, we have uh, aged bourbon uh, reserve, which is about uh, average of nine to 16 years. But we're also finishing the bourbon in all different ways. We use uh, we use Cabernet barrels. Uh, we use old rum barrels. Old rum barrels actually from Gosling. Right. We take those barrels and then we uh, age our already aged bourbon. Uh, and we also uh, drawing a blank on some of the other ones yeah, that Jefferson's, we do. But, Jefferson Ocean. Oh, how could I forget Je Jefferson's Ocean? Of course. Uh, Trey Zala, who created Jefferson's, what he decided to do was take some of our barrels from Jefferson's, put them on a boat, and sail them around the world for a year. Yeah. They go 30 different ports, crosses the equator four different times, and the constant motion of the bourbon hitting against the barrel just makes it age that much faster and progresses it. So even though you're tasting maybe a, a bourbon that's 16 years old, it tastes like it's been in the barrel a lot longer than that. Right. And what about the other uh, brands that complete the uh, Irish portfolio, like Beru? Yes, so Beru is the only Irish vodka available in America. And it's pretty smooth. It is smooth and it's not made from potatoes. Mm. I want to be very clear about that. That's the one question that people always ask me is if it's made from potatoes and otherwise it's not. it would be considered a poutine or not. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so besides Beru, we have uh, Clontarf, which is another Irish whiskey. That one's actually named after uh, a, a war that was fought. Uh, so everything we're trying to do uh, when naming the Napogue is be very true to the Irish history. 
And I bet the, the that last what, last brand, what was that? I had... Klontarf. We like to make it a little bit difficult to say the name of the brand because what it is is once you've had a couple of these cocktails, you can say them all day long and not have a problem. So Napogue and Klontarf and Baru. So did we did we get to every uh, every brand that you have at uh, Castle Brands, or did we miss one? Well, missing out on a, a key Scotch, uh, the Aaron. Of course, we've got the Isle of Aaron, which is uh, something new that we picked up. Thank you, Max. I know it's one of his favorites, so how can, how can I forget that? But the Isle of Aaron is actually from an island off of uh, Glasgow, and uh, it's a distillery that has been around since the 90s. It's all unpeated Scotch and uh, all age statements. Well, some age statements some cask finishes. We make a uh, 10 year, 14 year, 18 year. Uh, we make uh, an Amarone finish, a, uh, a Saturn finish, and a port finish, among other, it's, uh, all beautiful products. And for, lest we forget another Polini brand, Ferrochina, your Amaro. We don't do anything of that. I don't, I don't handle any of that. Okay. So we'll forget. <laughs> <laughs> well, um, sorry. It's okay. So um, you all, uh, they, Polini has their hands in right. a lot of different Pol items that they Polini make. Polini also has a, an Amaro called Ferrochina, which is launching in the United States. Right now it's only in New York, but it's going to be a bartender favorite, so I, I do want to point that out. Um, well, I'm looking forward to that, too. <laughs> okay. And, and lastly, since we're, you know, in Italy, um, Gozio Amaretto. Of course, Gozio Amaretto, which is still made from uh, real almonds. I, you know, a lot of other uh, brands are getting away from that, but we want to be as pure as possible, and uh, everything's natural. It's a beautiful amaretto product. Gozio. Yes. Gozio. Thank you. Well, great. Well, thank you for taking us through all the brands, and uh, I'm excited. I didn't get to try this last night at the opening party, so I'm excited oh, to you, try it right now. You missed out that. I, I but, know I did, know. No, but not really, because I'm going to get my uh, <laughs> get my way here. So Max, we'll uh, sort of turn it over to you. Yeah, fantastic. So Kristen already spoke about the brands themselves. So we're going to have Napo Castle as the base spirit. So we're using the 12-year single malt for this. Uh, typically, we just do an ounce and a half pour. And next, very simple cocktail too, if you wanted to, you know, replicate this at home, Jeff. But the Polini Piccello and the rest of the ingredients uh, for, from here on out is three quarters of an ounce. Oh, thank you. Sorry. I'm like, <laughs> so we're gonna do three quarters of an ounce, as I just mentioned, on the Polini Piccello. If I can hand this back to you, thank, thank you. you. And then um, to help, the peach come out in the uh, Polini. We're using a very delicious peach syrup um, from Nagomi, which is a Japanese brand. Okay. So this is a Japanese white peach, and we're using three quarters of an ounce. Get all that out of there. And then to balance the sweetness, we needed some acid, so we're using three quarters of an ounce of crushed lemon juice. That's all we need to mix in. All we got to do, I'm going to dump out this old ice, replenish the ice with fresh ice. Give it a nice hard shake. We stay in the business, we shake it, don't fake it. Gonna strain out the ingredients. Now, typically, I would put this in a larger wine glass just so we can have a little more aeration in there, just for aromatics. And then, lastly, we're gonna do a little splash of the Gosling's ginger beer, about three quarters of an ounce to an ounce. A little stir, just to incorporate all the ingredients evenly. Now, if you want to be really, really fancy, you get a nice, well, when it's seasoned, uh, some white peach, a nice slice of ripe peach in there, dehydrated peach, a little piece of candy ginger if you want to. So, and mint for aromatic as well, which is what we have to work with today, so. And uh, that's the, uh, the blush and ginger. So uh, I'm gonna give you this, so you not have the opportunity to try this last night. Thank you. That's amazing. Thank you. Really good. 
there we have it. The Blushing Ginger. Blushing Ginger. Yeah. And the Poe Castle, Castle Brands. Well, thank you guys for coming today. Um, you have a great portfolio at Castle Brands. It's a great drink. And um, thank you for, for um, being on, on Chilled, with Chilled Magazine and ChilledMagazine.com. Yeah, thanks for having us. It was fun. It was great. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you. Cheers.